Hello all, I trust you're all having a great day. I wanted to take the time today to discuss what I think is probably one of the most exciting games that's coming to the VR platform. That game is Ghosts of Tabor, or Tabor, I'm not quite sure. Now what is Ghosts of Tabor? Um, basically it is going from the developer's description. Uh, Ghost of Tabor is a multiplayer realistic survival virtual reality first person military shooter based in 2044 in a post apocalyptic environment. Now this doesn't tell you a huge amount, um, however the general consensus is uh, that the game is Tarkov in VR. So Ghost of Tabor is being developed by a small group of veteran developers, um, X-Forces veteran. Um, and fun fact, um, I was interested to know why they called it um, Combat Waffle Studios. It seems like a really weird name and it actually derives from what they used to call landmines. <laughs> they used to call landmines Combat Waffles and that's what inspired the name. So there's a little fun fact for you, uh, which I found interesting. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, we all know that Escape from Tarkov is probably one of the biggest games of the last five years uh, and has developed a really strong community of players. Uh, the hardcore nature of the game with the risk of losing all the gear that you've looted or bought from the traders leads to a level of anxiety that most people struggle to handle and in turn makes the game more engaging. Now, what makes Ghosts of Tabor special? Well, of course, it's just the nature of the medium that will be developed for. Uh, if you've never played a VR game or experienced VR, there is something inherently all striking about being in a fully three-dimensional world with a body and hands that you can control independently and interact with pretty much every part of the world you're in. The level of immersion that is possible through a VR headset is something that I urge every single person who's passionate about gaming to try. And with the type of game Ghost of Tabor is trying to be, it's going to be something special i'm pretty sure of that um, that being said vr as a whole doesn't have a huge amount of variety in the games that you can play um, yeah there are thousands of titles that you can play with some doing significantly better than others and i'm thinking about beat saber here however there are just a very few select games that tend to do well this means that a lot of AAA developers just don't put the time money into developing games for the platform um, yeah you get the odd uh, vr integration so like elite dangerous flight simulator um what was it squadrons star wars squadrons whatever it was called um but when you uh the only time that there's really been any like big blockbuster-esque titles was when the psvr released you know sony dumped ton of money into into games um, and yeah you know we have like echo and we have half-life alex but when you push those all aside the majority of the games just come from a small selection of dedicated indie vr game developers this means that the majority of games don't have much replayability or lengthy storylines that draw players in um, and taking an open-ended approach to a game with that looter shooter one life raid based dynamic would introduce a tremendous amount of replayability in my opinion watching as you develop your character build up their skills and develop what they're going to be calling the hq which in tarkov is called the hideout um, will be something that players will physically feel like they have achieved themselves you know at the end of the day the character becomes the player and vice versa Obviously, we have some comparable titles on VR currently, not necessarily tarkov but survival games such as Into the Radius and Green Hell VR. Uh, Into the Radius is probably the game that I would draw a closest comparison to on the VR platform as it has that hardcore survival aspect to it, uh, whilst also introducing the gear fin mechanic that everyone who's played 15 minutes of Daisy after finding an M4 and hearing gunshots in the distance will know. On the topic of immersion, uh, the developers have this to say, uh, immersion can be taken to a new level. In-game engagements are slowed down and are more intense as players move their bodies and move their hands to interact with the environment and each other. Actions are completed by mimicking the same motions as done in reality. 
for instance loading rounds into a magazine or holding a phone to your ear to make calls or taking your backpack off to insert or remove items from different pockets. In the HQ, upgrades will be done by assembling the various items to craft higher tier equipment. Assembly will be done by hand using parts and tools to build your gear. No more tapping a key to magically have a more advanced machine. Multiple people can work together to accomplish these tasks more efficiently. For example, if you're assembling a generator in your headquarters, you can assemble one side while your teammate assembles the other. This level of just granularity even extends to um, the, the way you loot players. So you can physically drag a body. So if you shoot a guy in the middle of the street and you go, well, you know, I can't loot him there. You can run up to him, grab him by the feet and drag him into a safe spot, so a bush. But you're not just going to open up an inventory skew. You, you will be able to physically manipulate the person that you have uh, you, you've effectively killed you know you're, you're basically manhandling their corpse uh, to open up the pockets take bits out you know and it's taking probably the most stressful aspect of Tarkov and timesing it by about 30. Even the things we take for granted in video games like just healing yourself you're gonna have to physically bandage your arm so you're gonna let's say you've been shot in the left arm you'll pull your left arm up and you'll take a bandage out and you'll wrap it around your arm um, and if you want to take some painkillers you have to physically take the bottle out pop the cap or, or or crack the packet whatever and bring the pills to your face in order to take them and gain the the the, the healing effects of them and it's just small little things like that which in turn boosts the, the the level of immersion that you feel in game now looping back to a point i was making earlier about variety for me ghost of tabor could be one of the bridging games in vr that would drive people to want to play Tarkov in its own right is stressful enough and taking that concept and porting it into VR will lead to such an immense experience for the player just to participate in. And I can see it being equally as gripping for viewers uh, watching the content on YouTube or the various streaming services. Now the important questions are when is the game releasing and what is it releasing on? Um, well, answering the first question, they're aiming for an early access release in Q1 2023, which uh, if we just forget about the fact that they're saying it's going to be early access, but basically every great game releases as an early access these days, especially in this kind of field. Um, but pushing that aside, that's only five months from now, you know, uh, and I believe they're currently doing a closed alpha. I could be wrong on that, but if you are and you're watching, hit me up. Uh, <laughs> you can apply in for interest in the closed alpha through their website, which is linked below, and their Steam store page, which is also linked below. And they, if you're interested, they regularly do little content drops on their Twitter and Discord channels, which I've also lumped in the description um, and answering the second question I'm really happy to say that it's basically releasing on everything so I'm not sure if it will be on everything in Q1 um, I heavily suspect it will be a PC VR only game in when on its initial early access release you know they might have a version available through something like side quest for the quest um but they have kind of confirmed that they want to release it on pc vr quest platform and psvr2 which is amazing so it's going to be on all the major vr platforms which basically means it's going to be available for every single member of the vr community outside of the google 
what the what was it, the Google Box, Google Glasses, whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. <laughs> Stupid little cardboard headset that they did. Um, and I'm not sure if they're going to be cross compatible with each other. I hope they are, but the thing with cross compatibility, especially when it's like such vastly different um, device capabilities um it can be very hit and miss um some games some games do it okay such as after the fall they did a really good job with that you know pc vr looks amazing plays amazing and performs amazing when linked up with people from the quest and people from uh, the ps vr like the original one um so i hope it will be um but you know i'm thinking back to the 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 quest release for onward and how divisive that was for the community because well let's face it onward had been a pc vr exclusive title for like four years and then they kind of released a huge downgrade for the pc vr in order to make it compatible with quest and um that you know sparked a huge amount of rage amongst the community but i suspect that's only because they did it after the fact it was released and they'd already spent long time optimizing it for pc i hope that's not going to happen with ghost of tarball if they do do a pc vr release first and then slowly roll out different versions but i'm hoping that if they're going to be baking cross compatibility in from the get-go they should be able to iron out any potential issues that could crop up but obviously that's kind of just my speculation i don't know if that's going to be the case i didn't ask (laughs) i just think that if they're going to be releasing it on multiple platforms then maybe it should be cross compatible now i guess that's kind of it for me um i'm planning on doing um regular videos on Ghost of Tabor because it's a game that I'm really excited for and a game that I've been kind of hoping will come to VR soon uh, as I just can't really <laughs> I can't return to, to, to Pancake Gaming after being in VR it just it changes you man <laughs> but yeah so I'm going to be doing some um, probably just like news drops and speculatory videos on the content drops that they do on their discord and twitter um so if you're interested in that you then just if you want to consider um hitting the subscribe button um you know it's up to you um but other than that yeah ciao